Heights BLP. Take two. Uh, this is a BLP lecture seminar. Um, obviously, this is a very intellectual one, even though it could be, you know, hormonal, extreme, you know, colorful, sensationalistic to some extent. Um, I will try somewhere, uh, you know, even though I have notes, a one-hour uh, opening about hormones and posture and to a very uh, logical, systemic, A to Z point. Uh, a very global view, ideology, uh, reflection, you know, because once I, I, I won the... Um, all of fame, you know, GH15, since you know, I guess that I was you know, fairly honest. Within myself, I felt that I was in a knowledge blur. You know, I could not connect everything. I could, you know, I knew spare here, there, there. You know, many people there say, "Oh, the LP is a living encyclopedia," but in some ways, I had a lot of awareness. Uh, experience data, but I wanted to turn it in something more uh, more impressive to actually deserve the Hall of Fame title. And you know, this pretty recent uh, goal for myself came uh, the challenge I want to embrace for the next 10 years. So uh, I'm starting to do a seminar about hormone and posture and posturology, the science of it, uh, pretty soon. Some in Australia, some locally, some all over Canada. Um, and this is my warm-up. It's a personal warm-up to see how I can actually deliver, you know, within practice and halfway improvisation. Uh, because I think that within improvisation, you know, I don't like those seminars where it comes with image and PDF file and it seems overly uh, prepared. Uh, I prefer that kind of a connect communication, you know, because communication is everything. Uh, the neuroplasticity of learning, glial cells, you know, and, and, and intellectual expression, it's more uh, profound, I guess. Uh, okay, so let's start this. Why posture? Well, you have to understand that bodybuilding, it's the only sport that you go on stage almost naked to sell your symmetry. You know, if we think Kevin Rohn, Sean Ray, Richard Jones, they're very highly symmetrical, Phil Heath being our Mr. Olympia. Um, it's a beauty of nature. And it's a beauty of relativity. And um, I think if you see posture as an evolution development tool as you stand, well, there's more frontex, cortex, frontal cortex development, intelligence, awareness, X, Y, Z. So uh, regarding, uh, regarding evolution, standing is... Not the optimal because because there's still evolution today. You know the Tibetan are still, you know, uh, they they had adapt to higher uh, higher altitude. You know with hemoglobin blood profile X Y Z. Uh, there's still microevolution today, but standing was a very you know uh, emblematic effigy of uh, human evolution, if I can say it. In 1940, we're going to start far, okay, we're going to start with kind of a social uh, study whatsoever. In 1940, Jackson Pollock's splashing painting, Clash, you know, and call it hard, you know, highly uh, rebellious, you know, is this dichotomy of what's art, is it instinctive, is it plan is it you know it does it need like times so it's just like hard it can be made within second and actually that Pollock culture you know uh, was sold for 140 millions so it's a very um, symbolic part of modern art expression and why I'm talking about denaturization is because 
you know, in terms of architecture, Franco Gehry had did the same thing, kind of blur, blah, 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 doing the Guggenheim Bilbao in, in Spain, and this building has no structure. And then Derrida, you know, uh, French philosopher about deconstructivism, bringing denaturalization with emancipation and utopic uh, tenic, uh, very complex. What I mean by that is today we're more in this post denaturalization meaning oh my god the modern life is great but we have to eat organic, we have to eat good, we need hormonal balancing, we need to filter our water, we need to take supplements, we need to take care of our health because as bodybuilder Today, our life is different. Estrogen is less biodegradable than testosterone. And we have more uh, immunomodulation kind of uh, philosophy because bodybuilding is life. It's grabbing the life by the horns. You know, it's like protein is life, interaction, enzyme, and uh, bodybuilder, the lead out of protein. They take weights and, you know, it's gravitational, it's physics. It's biology, it's psychology, it's competition, it's it's a little bit of everything. And so it's it creates very colorful character. You know, if we look at the life of Aaron Clark, well, Aaron Clark has draw comics. He has played music. He has you know um, uh, was it rollerblading or biking and jumping. You know, he has very different type of neuroplasticity, glial stimulation. Those champions were made champion by situation. And that's very interesting, that kind of nurture versus nature. If you follow the law of evolution and you have access to different type of media, you know, like Phil He that played basketball. He was a basketball player. And being a basketball paper built a lot of three-dimensional awareness. Your hands, your neuroplasticity of your hands. If you look at the end, well, there's vitamin D receptor. Vitamin D receptor and enhance the grip. If you look the strength of someone, you will go in the middle nerve, over nerve, you will test this over nerve. If the ulnar nerve is weak, could be a vitamin lack D receptor. And that's because the baby had lack of grips practice you know baby you know how to grip from life it's an instinct autonomic reflexes you know it's very bizarre today to look at adult and practice primitive reflex on them meaning you know they need rehabilitation of primitive baby reflex to become become better athlete it makes no sense and that's where this understanding of what evolution had gift us and what's the modern world had taken out and you as new young bodybuilder has to kind of repair and heal to make better generation later on in life by knowledge and why I'm talking about that is because let's say dolphin as bread fed for three, four years. They bread fed for three, four years. And human being, if they breast fed for three, four years, well, if they breast fed for three, four years, it means we're alive today. That's why we're alive today, because breastfeeding, breastfeeding strengthened immunity, breastfeeding built a proper jaw. If you have a formula bottle in your mouth, nothing really happens. If you, if you pull milk from a breast, well, you're pulling the milk which built a proper jaw and what's very important it's with that pulling you're building the jaw but you're building proper tongue development behavior meaning your jaw and your tongue is the role of your stability is the strongest uh, muscle uh, within you and uh, today's modern world there's not much <clears throat> breastfeeding going on and why BLP is talking about breastfeeding is because a lot of bodybuilder have sleep apnea and a lot of bodybuilder has mouth breathing and if you have mouth breathing well you're gonna lack of oxygen you're gonna lack of iron and it's gonna be hard to build muscle so um, better sleep with a mouthpiece sleeping with a mouthpiece 
is a tool of repairing uh, dysfunctional evolutionary repercussion on your childhood because every monster were once uh, a baby. You know? And there's a bang, and there's a bang, and then there's one. And then the universe starts. Let's start from far away, okay? The universe starts, whatever you may think, you know, philosophy, theory about evolution, and the birth of the universe. At 72 degrees, this rock planet hurt whatsoever, there's photosynthesis start. Photosynthesis from rock. We thought for a long time that it comes from plants. Was it what actually rocks? And from photosynthesis, water, life, enzyme, interaction, blah blah blah, start off. And bacteria was, you know, the first on life. And what I'm talking about bacteria is because those bacteria still exist today. The first one that were on Earth, they still exist today. If you look at human cells, we're 50% human cell, 50% bacteria. It will be very, very hard to change the microbiome of your guts. It will be very hard to change your microbiome inside. We'll need to alter lifestyle and you know eat good for a free, you know pretty long time, few weeks, and then it will adapt. But on a reverse pattern, the bacteria can alter your brain behavior pretty quick. They're very smart. If you talk about you know genuine biologists, they will go, oh, the E. coli is the most uh, smartest organism on Earth, and you know even if you uh, if you look at bacteria in a sterile environment, you know for 50 years, even though in a sterile environment there's still evolution. They evolute. Uh, they have evolution even in the in, a, in an abstract world of time where nothing really happened. That's very interesting when you think about that. And the bacteria, you know, with ice age, even when the ice melt, and those bacteria, you know, being frozen for 750 million years whatsoever, they're still alive. You know? That's show almost immortality whatsoever. So when you look at the universe and this kind of, you know, planets have you know, orbital calculation, dynamics, blah, 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 metaphysician. But on Earth, there's like electron, uh, electrodynamics, relativity or relativity whatsoever. There is equilibrium in ubiquity. That will sound almost uh, spiritual, but think about that. If human are made of star and the entire universe is in perfect stature of equilibrium that you exist today. Do you really think you will need shoes that hold your ankle to strengthen your deadlift? You will need to take your wisdom tooth. You will need glasses. You will need a valve to be stronger, which actually weaken your fascia. So in some ways, even though there's magic explanation of you know neuroscience and the brain and the nervous system, because if we look at the fish, well they have insulin growth factor like us, and if we look at a fly, well the nervous system then dry to listen, soma, myelin sheet, the accent speaking, you know this nervous system is same of an insect, so. And you know, this first bacteria converting into earthworms, and earthworms are hermaphrodite, and hermaphrodite kind of reproduce with itself, and that hermaphrodite comes from the rocks, and there's photoreceptor coming out, which create you know the first essence of vision. Those photoreceptors still exist today, and that's why we see, and this is the way we see, it's the way we perceive the horizon, the way we tilt our body, the way we stand, the way we pose. So, is it normal to do a double side chest that have rotation like this? To have one side bigger than the other one? To have a, 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 you know, a, a double bicep that's kind of unequal? Not really, you know? See, short legs is 25% of young kids today. And when you have a short legs, and you're putting steroids in your body, 
and you're gaining 40, 50 pounds, well, you have asymmetry that create pain. Pain is no harm. Pain is a pro protection in some ways, you know, because tramposin, jumping gene, you know, the, 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 the immune system is so bright and so intelligent, it can even stop sickness that don't even exist. And that's how beautiful nature's at, you know? And I think that this is where modern bodybuilder not believing in nature and kind of this uncertainty. But the thing is, if you breastfed your kid, if the baby grow in a bed on the floor without any restriction, with no gloves, with no boots, you know, almost being poor actually help you out. Having nothing, at least the baby has full development, full freedom. They just need love. Because, you know, in the breastfeeding you have oxytocin going on. What's very interesting about hormones is if you're in a bed and you think you're going to die and your lips turning blue and you think someone choking you to death, well, you might get nervous. You might have, you know, hormones going on. So what I mean by that is what's going on in your head will affect your body. And you know, as bodybuilder, we're injecting swallowing hormones that will alter behavior. Aggression is not induced by testosterone. Testosterone modulates your behavior and enhance what you actually are. And uh, I think that bodybuilders should be interested in behavior and neuroscience because we're in 2015. If there is no brain, there is no game. If there is no brain, you're dead. So if there's no will, nothing's going to happen. So psychology, behavior, science, it's all very interesting because it makes you understand the beauty of human nature. And I think that we had lost that sight. We had lost this, you know, if we're parents, we have to work hard. It's very hard to give breastfeeding for three years to a baby. It's actually a lot of work. They need this development to become great athlete. We don't, we're not supposed to have only 10 Mr. Olympia. I think we're supposed to be all great bodybuilder. And uh, if, if you really think about performance, you can take your, in, in and I'll say this, uh, developing grip. Why are you talking about grip? Because if you go like this, and if you go like that, like this, you kind of breathe by the chest, and like that, you kind of breathe deeper. It's going to sound weird what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is in grip, you have more oxygen. You have more oxygen, you have more life. You have more life, you have better grip, better strength, better arm to grow. If you're a bodybuilder, you're not supposed to have small arms and short calves, and you're supposed to be big equally everywhere. And uh, today, our modern world is very different. Most of the most upcoming quality bodybuilders, they come in very poor foreign country or, you know, where there's more, uh, like I say, I repeat myself, uh, breastfeeding. Because, you know, if you look at creation, okay, there's zygote and sperm, and then there's sperms coming, okay, there's sperms coming. And this sperm, you have all this mitochondrial energy in the chromosome, and they're coming in this egg cells in the woman with uh, capacitation. There's many sperms coming. There's one sperm, and then there's your life. You know, you're a 250 pounds bodybuilder, but you had come from one sperm. So if you had come from one sperm and you're still walking today, well, you're supposed to be symmetrical. Understand it's just a common demoninator of looking at life. Um, you know? Because there's paracrine. Paracrine is when you know in cells to cell communication. Paracrine is kind of a whisper around itself. And then there's endocrine, which you know bodybuilder really uh, we really uh, like or whatsoever. Uh, 
In endocrine, it's like sending emails to everyone. It's a longer process. That's why you have to do a cycle. It has to be eight, ten weeks. It's not overnight. Doing steroids one day, not much going to happen. It's still adaptation. And life is about adaptation. And steroids are about adaptation too. It needs time for your body, for the endocrine to say, okay, I'm going to let go my natural system. I'm going to go synthetic. I'm going to create homeostasis equilibrium with my steroids. Being a new man to build more muscle, where I'm going to eat more protein, eat my essential fat, and blah, 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 blah. Because, you know, in embryology, and why I'm talking about embryology, because, uh, you know, we have talked to the bird of the universe, and now we're going to talk about your own bird. In this placenta, the fetus, the fetus has been heard crying in abortion. It's very a mystery. And the fetus, you know, can smile, can tears, can record the, the voice of their mom, they pull the placenta, they lick it, you know, they kick around, they pull the uh, umbilical cord, they're very active, and even boys and girls masturbate, you know, so even the fetus has kind of a, an awareness of pleasure already, they really have lots of hormones going on, even from, you know, prenatal and you know what they did study on prenatal stress if you go google it's very interesting they had create stress on 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 fetal prenatal and they could create rats with schizophrenia alzheimer parkinson they could pre-program epigenetic transcription of stress to create specific sickness this is how crazy it is so if you have a baby within you well you're better not to fight because you know let's say you're an adult and you're wondering why the hell I have fibromyalgia? But let's say you're short his legs, you're walking like this, your vision's not right, your jaw's not right, you have a lot of internal stressor, and you had a toxic umbilical cord, and you had crazy parents that were still fighting. So in some ways, trauma makes who you are. And a lot of bodybuilders are actually insecure persons. You know, of course, the best genetics kind of embrace the bodybuilding lifestyle and do very well. But there's a lot of bodybuilders that kind of, oh, bro, I'm taking three grams of tests, I'm weighing 175. It kind of, there's something wrong going on. So, that's why you need health awareness. You cannot grow and build muscle without working in you. You have to have the parasympathetic, the vagus nerve in a relaxed mode. You go wild at the gym and then you kind of, you know, not meditate, but, you know, create. You know, like Kai Greene paint, Kai Greene does circus dancing, Kai Greene is very philosophical. And, uh, you know, those best genetics, they kind of try to as possible to reach as many multimedia of expression to create glial cells to you know, brain development. Okay, let's say I, I test my strength uh, axis of my shoulder on pressure. I have this kind of strength. Let's say I try again pressing on this phone on the floor. Okay, I press on the phone and then I test my strength and I barely none. What that means is stability before strength. As human species stand, we build very precise baroreceptors that have a lot of space in the brain. There's a lot of baroreceptor, which is the ground proprioception that link your brain. Beautiful tool of human history. The heart of the feet. So when you have shoes, you need shoes that respect the heart flexibility of your foot. Stability before strength. Wrong proprioception. If you have parents, overprotecting parents, putting boots on you all the time, and you were in an environment that you could run, you end up with flat foot. If you end up with flat foot, well, your knees go inside, and then this goes like this. And then you cannot walk like this for 40 years. Doesn't work. Why? Because you put boots 
on a baby that's supposed to build ground proprioception and you pay for it. Your joy, lack of breastfeeding, you say, why the fuck this guy talking about breastfeeding? Well, if your jaw's not right, you're not breathing properly right, which leads you to sleep apnea, gain weight, insulin resistance, and you're not gonna make a, body, a great bodybuilder. You could genetically have high 1GF, low myostatin, and you know, being really great, but even then, you will suffer. I'm not sure if I repeat myself, but let's do a warm up. Dark matters of the universe expand symmetrically. Feel heat being a symmetrical man. DNA have symmetrical uh, coding, you know, called palindrome. If you're asymmetrical in terms of cells and molecular function, they will create sickness. So they link posture to pathology. If you look at evolution, we're supposed to be symmetrical. If you want to have a kid that being Mr. Olympia, well, you allow him to have the maximal potential of his growth and strength when he's a baby. A baby actually can do chin-up. It's very good. But, you know, today they're like, oh, no, a baby cannot do chin-up. He will hurt himself. He will injure himself. He will... You think that? You really think that? Seriously? You really think that? Oh yeah, we had lived a uh, hundred thousand of years, but a baby should not chin up. That makes sense to you? So there's this kind of a moral change, perception change. And you know where there's, uh, you know, what if you, there's, there's baby that does chin up on YouTube and you have this kind of a conflicted perception. Some people say, oh my God, it's erotic. Some say it's awful, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, if you look at Frank McGrath forearms, his forearms being used like this, oh, he had practiced somehow from a long time ago. You're a product of your past. And we're in this generation of, you know, being bigger, faster, better, blah, blah, blah. So I think it starts from, from parents that are very aware of performance uh, development, you know, for people that actually uh, uh, care. So in this, in the, in the, we're, we're, we're in this kind of genomic transcription uh, generation, I guess. You know, gene, 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 let's talk about the gene, let's, let's know, let's figure it out how the, how the gene works, you know. And uh, there's so many junk DNA and there's so many encoding and the only, you know, profile 5% of the DNA, which... And it's very complex because I don't think it's DNA, RNA that gives protein and amino acid. I think it's actually the contrary, which is like adaptation of protein enzymes that affect RNA, turn of retrovirus and transposon and jumping gene, and then gives like a, you know this DNA emblematic of, of, of human life. You know this tree of life where we're 50% uh, banana and 90. 90% chimps and 80% rats, whatever the percentage is. And this, this gene is very interesting, VOXP2 gene, which is the, VA, the, the communication, the expression gene. You know, it exists upon every animal species. You know, rats talking ultrasound. Uh, the dolphin, they click, 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 click. The Africans, first human species on earth, they click also. And a baby, before he talks, he click too. But why that click? Where in kind of VOXP2 gene human expression, well, it's similar stimulus to thumb sucking. Thumb sucking is like a brainstem cerebral unconscious massage stimulus. You know, that's why you will see those kids that lack of oxytocin since lack of breastfeeding, attachment, whatever. It's a, if you're a person that, oh, I love my parents, but I only talk to them once a year and I'm wondering why. Well, a baby works in unconscious memory. He doesn't remember what happened before two years old. It's the brainstem. But the brainstem remember, meaning that, you know, for really profound attachment that you know later on in life you will be more monogamous more stable less you know uh, hit the wall because my girlfriend say no to sex <clears throat> well you need that kind of oxytocin and that's where hormones is so important because if if a kid hurt himself bleeding you know break his arm whatever he has touch 
which bring trust and right away you kind of heal and feel calm. There's old woman or you know alone in the Sheridan Center, the kids are coming inside the house and you know she feel comfort and it's very quick it's quicker than any gabapentin any you know uh, xanax whatsoever it's faster human emotion is faster the fastest way to kill a person it's by loneliness let's go very far now let's talk about animal con cognition it's very interesting i think it's very interesting listen to me come here my friend come here so, you see this is an ant and this is a fungi, a fungi growing out of the brain, and the fungi control the insect brains. This is a termite, termite architecture building. Even today, it will be very hard to calculate all the hair, humidity rate, you know, everything to have them very alive. This is a rat mold. Those rat mole, they live inside old and, you know, and there's this very, uh, you know, uh, a rodent organism. And there's two that does absolutely nothing, just waiting. And because when the rainy season start, well, they come at the end of the, the hole and they put their butt to stop access to their friends, to you know, as a protective tool. Though this this kind of animal condition, let's say we take bees. The first day you put the food, they come. The second day you put the food, they come. The third day, they're waiting for you. If we take a reptile, and the reptile crawl like human being, right? They work as an instinctive pattern. You put an insect below a button, right? He unmade the bot, unpaid the button to eat the insect. And you do it again and it's faster. You do it again and it's faster. You do it again and it's faster. Which means there is adaptation, intellectual adaptation on the environment to a very greater degree that's very impressive. Crows could remember, you know, the face of who pissed him off three years ago, which car pissed him off. There's a lot of animal cognition study. They're very interesting. They even take pigeons to recognize Monet and Picasso. They could recognize Picasso upside down, reverse, blah, blah, blah. What I say is, if the universe is so in ubiquity and the equilibrium and the human being is alive today and animal cognition has outstanding intelligence, why you will not trust postural patterns? So, you follow the law of evolution, you will build great athletes. I gotta read you this, okay, because I don't remember every detail uh, <coughs> personally. <coughs> this is very interesting, okay? So, I've been talking for about 40 minutes, so I'm gonna read you this. And think seriously how wonderful is fucked up that is, okay? There was an NCBI uh, blah 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 study, so this is serious, very serious, okay? So, these results suggest that sperm from promiscuous deer mice discriminate among relative and thereby cooperate with the most closely related sperm, an adaptation likely driven by sperm competition. In species where female made promiscuous sleep, sperm competition in which ejaculate or multiple Multiple male compete for fertilization within the female reproductive can drive the evolution of physiological, morphological, and behavioral adaptation. Is that fucked up? Is that crazy? I mean, come on, bro. That's mean that when you jerk off and we're a couple of friends, he's scrapping on his sperm all together. Well, the monogod, the mono. Uh, the polygamous uh, sperm will sing to each other, the monogamous will go on the other side. This is how weird nature is at. And I think that more you discover about nature, the thing about nature is not to unveil all mystery, is to keep reinventing yourself. And posturology, I think it's a great way to approach brain condition, vestibular training, cranial nerve synchronization, it doesn't cost anything. 
have funky insoles that bring your brainstem being equal, well, they might be expensive, but fuck, they work. So, you know, there's tool to heal itself. So trust your nature and trust yourself. Okay, my friend, neurobiology of the will, okay? They had studied a human being, you know, the fMRI, functional magnetic resonance, blah, blah, blah. And he's pressing an X and he's spreading a Y. He's spreading an X and he's spreading a Y. You know, vice versa choice. And they had seen in the brain, by anticipation, uh, the gesture, the decision before the person was even unaware. Meaning their fMRI was actually faster than the brain. <clears throat> Which means there's this kind of uh, will, very complex anticipatory anticipation. Meaning, you know, the human being works by anticipation in terms of dopamine. It'll be very excited if, if it's a maybe. No, not if it's yes, it's too easy. If it's a no, it's a blah, blah, blah. If it's a maybe, there's kind of a raging you know, uh, dopamine going on. Why I'm talking about dissipation is because when we walk, walking gait dynamic, well, there's anticipation of pressure, and pressure is tensegrity system. And tensegrity system, it's fascia. If the universe is in equilibrium, we are equilibrium too. That means that the fascia starts from the jaw and goes below the foot, which means, like, you know, you've seen Pauli Kane lately, he grasped and technique the jaw, and there's more range of motion. And people are like, oh my god, he does magic. But if you follow, if you understand what's going on, in terms of fascial connective tissue, Thomas Meyer anim uh, animatic train makes perfect sense. Because, come here, my friend, I don't know if you can see. Let's say I'm a baby that crawls, okay? My toes, it touching the floor. And my tongue is going this way, and I'm looking that way. Well, if you look at a cadaver and you're pulling the tongue, the big toes will follow because it's the entire stability. That's why they say the tongue is the strongest muscle. And the tongue is not only the strongest muscle, it change how your shoulder will behave. Your tongue with GLP-1 remember meals that you eat 10 years ago. Uh, the sweet taste receptor when you do medication on GLP-1, well, you know, the, the pancreas releases insulin. But the tongue saying which type of glycemic food coming to pancreas, they do medication on GLP-1, it does wonderful on a diabetic, whatever. But what I mean by that is, is see and can make relation and systemic connection about outstanding logic and human development from a baby that starts like this to looking like that. Why? Because if you took an arrow and you threw it that way and you try to pull to throw your tongue the other side, your opposite side, you will lose strength. Which means every dynamics work in the same way. From the ground, to the vision, to the vestibular system, there is this perfect uh, equilibrium of nature. Well, this is my conclusion. So, hope you get my message. Um, hope you understand that I, you know. Of course, I make a lot of you know emotion about it. It's because I had a seven milliliter short legs, and when I was doing my double bicep, I was turning like. And even though I try every option, I could not understand why I injure myself. But if you have a short legs, it brings your this foot inside, and my vision were false here. I turned like that, and I had a jaw like this. So I was like that. So I was, I can say this, a walking chaos. And it was fun because I remember I was using all, always that, you know, uh, expression, oh, I'm a walking chaos, I'm a walking chaos, ah, laughing at myself. But I'm act I was actually a real walking chaos. And now with postural G, fixing cross bite, height in my teeth because I had clenched like this, fix, you know, my foot, not with a foot arch, not playing, respecting evolutionary 
uh, logic just lift up my ankle because I had stand too quick. Uh, I had braces when I was young and I all all this, you know, and now I'm 40 and I'm going master. I'm actually training equally too. I've been struggling with my symmetry for 14 years and actually today I know the truth of the why why I somewhere fail and I have a last chance, you know, I've been quite extremist, so this is my last chance to compete, to do well, and then retire because I feel this is my end. And I don't want, I don't want a young kids to live all those struggles not understanding why. And that's why I'm such an advocate. I know it doesn't reach every public, but if you're not straight, and if your shoulder's like that, and if one side is bigger than the other one, well, there's a reason, and it's fixable.